commercial saunas are getting more and more popular as people are taking their wellness more seriously. In this video, we will go over the key considerations for anyone looking to build a commercial sauna. My name is Veti, I'm a Finnish sauna expert, owner and founder of thesaunaheater.com and thesaunaconsultation.com. Since starting my businesses in 2022, I have successfully helped over 3,000 US-based sauna builders complete their sauna projects. This commercial sauna building guide will be divided into four different sections. In first section, we will cover the accessibility and safety considerations you need to think about when building a commercial sauna. In the second section, we will talk about selecting your sauna heater. In the third section, we will talk about sauna benches in commercial saunas. And in the fourth section, we will go over special ventilation requirements when it comes to commercial sauna spaces. Part one, accessibility and safety in commercial saunas. In the US, about 13% of the people have some sort of disability. These numbers are similar across most Western countries. Usually when building commercial spaces, the goal is to keep them accessible for disabled people. And this way the sauna is no different from any other commercial space. So the question is, how do we build a sauna that is accessible for largely everyone? To start with, we need to make sure that people in wheelchairs or with any kind of disability are able to actually get to the sauna. This means that all entryways, changing rooms and other related spaces need to be thresholdless and located onto the same floor. Next, we also need to make sure that there is enough space to move with a wheelchair. The most critical is a turning radius of one and a half meters, which must accommodate a 1.3 meter cube. Narrower spaces are unsuitable for wheelchairs. It is also worth considering the International Smoke Sauna Club's recommendation to include a vertical post or bar near the benches. This serves as an alternative to traditional handrail, providing something to hold on to for support throughout the entire process of getting up and down from the sauna benches. Lastly, many people like myself have a poor eyesight and cannot wear glasses in the sauna. For this reason, it's essential to ensure that any sauna can be made sufficiently bright, allowing everyone to see clearly without the need for their glasses. Let's move into second part of the video, which is selecting your commercial sauna heater. Commercial saunas are almost without an exception heated with electric sauna heaters. Reason being that electric sauna heaters are turned on by just a push of a button and electric sauna heaters can be controlled easily, even remotely if needed. Electric sauna heaters keep the sauna warm at relatively low cost, so they are also suitable to commercial saunas that way. A traditional wood-fired sauna heater would not work in a gym or spa sauna, since someone would need to keep adding more firewood to the stove constantly, and controlling the temperature specifically is almost impossible with wood-fired sauna heater. With wood-fired sauna heaters, the more wood you burn, the higher the temperature gets but actually choosing the temperature very specifically is not possible with wood-fired sauna heaters. Thus, they are not very suitable for commercial spaces. When it comes to electric sauna heaters, commercial sauna spaces often become so large that one electric sauna heater, even if you choose the biggest model, would not be able to heat up the space sufficiently. What bigger spa saunas do is that they wire multiple larger electric sauna heaters together and control them with one single control system. This is a common practice and easy to do for any experienced electrician. Obviously, not all commercial saunas are as big and sometimes one larger heater is enough. Lastly, you need to figure out the electrical requirements of your building where you are making the commercial sauna. While home sauna heaters typically run with 240 volts one-phase configuration, commercial buildings often require 208 volt three-phase power. Sauna heaters that are designed for commercial use are typically offered in multiple configurations configurations, you just need to communicate your needs clearly with the provider of your heater. Of course, remember to check that your electrical network has enough power available for the heaters. This is really a problem with commercial sauna buildings, but I think it's good to double check with your electricians as electrical sauna heaters need to draw a lot of amps 
in section 3 let's talk about sauna benches in commercial saunas sauna benches in commercial saunas require some extra considerations compared to home sauna benches while we have an extensive master class on building sauna benches which you can watch after this video let's go over the commercial sauna bench specifications next it's always good to have multiple levels of benches but in commercial saunas this is even more important than in home saunas optimally you want to have at least three levels of benches in your commercial sauna. Reason is that some people like saunas that are extremely hot while others prefer milder temperatures. When you have multiple levels of benches, sauna goers can kind of decide where, whether they want to be sitting on the highest bench where it's super hot typically or in the lower bench where it might be a little bit cooler. Why I'm saying that higher benches have always higher temperatures compared to lower benches is that hot air is lighter than cold air. Thus the hot air is going to always rise up while the cold air is going to plummet to the bottom. You can lessen this effect called stratification by having a sufficient ventilation but there is always going to be some temperature differences between the lower level and upper level of your sauna no matter how good your ventilation is. Next thing to consider when building your commercial sauna benches is the ability to clean your sauna. So commercial saunas are typically used daily so you want to also clean them often I would say at least once a week if you use them every day. While sufficient temperature is killing the bacteria on your sauna benches you want to be able to at least clean the floor like regularly as if you think about it sauna goes wet a lot during the sauna going and that sweat is going to end up to the floor if you have a lot of different sauna goers going in and out every day i think you want to clean uh, the floor kind of uh, regularly to keep the hygiene of a sauna sufficient also one reason to not build your pen structures too tightly is that you want the air to circulate around the benches because air circulation around your bench boards dries them up. When your sauna is constantly used you want uh, your bench boards to dry up quickly because otherwise they can rot and decay and wear out rather quickly. Let's move into fourth and last section which is importance of proper ventilation. This is where most people go wrong when building saunas, especially with commercial sauna builds. Commercial saunas have a lot of people inside the sauna at once. People consume oxygen and produce carbon dioxide as a byproduct. When a lot of people do that, consume oxygen and produce carbon dioxide, if there is no sufficient ventilation, meaning enough fresh air entering the sauna and used air getting exhausted out of the sauna, carbon dioxide levels will go very, very high, which A, makes the sauna experience shorter as you have to get out quickly to search fresh air and oxygen to breathe and B, is toxic and causes more harm than good in your body if you have a sauna that has high carbon dioxide levels and low oxygen levels. Especially if you build a bigger commercial sauna, it's super important to run your ventilation with dedicated HAVAC machines to ensure sufficient air circulation, great oxygen levels and the drying of your sauna benches. Ventilation also equalizes the temperatures and reduces the stratification that I talked about earlier. So this makes the sauna experience much more pleasant when your head and your feet are closer to the same temperature level. If you have seen these gym saunas with signs saying that you can throw water on the heater, oftentimes the reason is the lack of ventilation in those saunas, in which case if you don't have proper ventilation, throwing water onto the heater would lead to the sauna staying super humid all day, which then causes growth of mold and bacteria on the lower bench levels of the sauna. Thank you for watching. As it relates to the last topic we talked about, you can watch our ventilation masterclass here to get a detailed guide on how to ventilate your sauna space.